Trader Joe's rocks it when it comes down to fall autumn products. They have a ton of pumpkin spice stuff. They have a ton of new keto stuff. But here's the thing, it's never labeled as keto. So you have to do a little bit of digging. So I went to Trader Joe's and I found the new November 2021 keto items that aren't necessarily labeled as keto. That way we can break them down. Now I've divided this video into chapters so that you can shop by section of the grocery store. So you can skip ahead to the dairy section, you can skip ahead to frozen, meat, whatever. Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so we're starting with the refrigerated section, like the dairy, the meat, anything that's in the cold section. First off, they have this new raclette cheese. Now the thing about raclette cheese, it's a melting cheese, obviously going to be keto friendly, very low carb, in this case, zero carb. What is unique about this is it's a softer cheese that is used for melting. It's a French cheese, but it's also aged. A lot of times softer cheeses aren't aged all that long. So this is pretty cool. Usually like the minimum age time for this kind of cheese is six months, usually up to two years. So really cool on keto because we always wanna go for those aged cheeses. The longer that a cheese is aging, the more of the microbial benefit that you get and the less the lactose that there is. It ends up breaking some of the stuff down, more bioavailable, easy to digest. So really happy to see this. this is something if you're doing keto like in French cuisine it's melted over potatoes and things like that but on keto you could melt it over like cauliflower mashed potatoes you could melt it over cauliflower rice you know the world is your oyster when it comes to that okay then they have this this is cool this is called brown butter now when you look at the ingredients of this it's butter but it also has some interesting stuff in there. It has a little bit more of cream in it. So they end up making it a little bit creamier. So sometimes, I don't know if it's the case with this particular brown butter, but they'll even add more cream to it to give it like a little bit more of a thinner consistency. And then when it's refrigerated, it thickens up. Uh, in this case, they say they added natural flavors. Could be a question mark. Uh, natural flavors, as you know from my videos, are always up in the air. 150 different things they can be. Good, bad, ugly, we don't know. They're just classified under natural flavors. But I can tell you, based upon tasting this and by looking at it, that that is vanilla that's in there. There is some vanilla bean in there. So the natural flavoring very well could just be vanilla bean. I wish they had to just put vanilla bean in there, but who knows. Anyhow, obviously a perfect keto staple. What you'd wanna use this on if you use keto bread or anything like that, spread it on some keto bread or some keto bagels. Or again, if you wanted to add it into some mashed cauliflower or like mashed hearts of palm or maybe some spaghetti squash. Another one that I forgot to mention is this goat cheese spiced pumpkin flavor, which is really interesting. Now, if you look at the ingredients, you notice it's got some sugar added to it, but we're still talking only two grams. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, is it a keto item? Yeah, because it would still work. Goat cheese, obviously the best keto cheese that you could have, simply because it's rich in those MCTs that can drive up ketone values. But the sugar kind of negates that and might slow down ketogenesis. But I still think that, I don't know, overall, a good quality cheese. Sorry, I realized this after the fact when my videographer, JR, let me know that we missed one in the store. Okay, I wanted to address this one really quick because kombucha comes up all the time. This is a new GT's Synergy Fall Edition kombucha. Don't be mistaken, this thing has 16 grams of carbs, 16 grams of sugar in there. Okay, when it comes to kombucha, they have what's called the SCOTI. So it's a symbiotic uh, combination of bacteria and yeast, basically. Now what happens is they have to add sugar to feed that bacteria. So kombucha, even though there's no real clinical evidence of kombucha having any actual probiotic effect, it's not legally considered a probiotic food, uh, it still sells like it is. So I would usually recommend going for water kefir instead simply because it's going to have more of a potential probiotic effect. Dairy kefir, if you can handle dairy, is even better than that. I wanted to mention that because it's easy to fall victim to that and it is a new item. Okay, now this one isn't brand spanking new, but what's interesting is Trader Joe's had their just chicken on the shelves for years. And I was always disappointed because it always had modified food starch added to it. It had all this dextrose added to it. It was kind of a Franken chicken. It wasn't real chicken. Now they have this new just chicken and this one is cooked chicken breasts, which is just boneless, skinless chicken breasts, water, extra virgin olive oil, salt and black pepper. Like something I can actually have on the go. I can find a Trader Joe's and I can have actual chicken and olive oil, not modified food starch. So not brand spanking new for October, but new to me because I just found it and realized that they changed it. So definitely grab some of this. Uh, today's video sponsor is also ButcherBox, speaking of chicken. So if you like filets, if you like beef, anything like that, and you want it delivered to your doorstep, I put a link down below. ButcherBox has changed my family's life. Like being able to get grass-fed, grass-finished cuts of meat delivered to my, it's, 
amazing, especially if I'm on keto, because I am increasing my protein intake quite a bit more. But speaking of chicken, their chicken is of the utmost quality. It is amazing, has very, very thin amounts of fat in it. So you're not getting these big, like nasty things you have to cut out. Anyway, I personally use that chicken all the time. And there is a link down below for you to check out ButcherBox and also get some awesome deals that go along with that. So that link is down below in the description to get meat delivered to your doorstep. It's awesome. Okay, now let's move into the next chapter. Okay, now we've moved into the frozen section. A little bit ambiguous. You have to look carefully, right? I almost walked by this and that JR was filming me and he, uh, he was like, hey man, you missed this because it was so easy to miss because that looks like real spaghetti, right? Well, this is harvest spaghetti squash spirals. So it's spaghetti squash that they've done a good job of turning into noodles. Usually if you've made spaghetti squash before, you know that when you use the fork, it hardly ever comes out looking like pasta. Um, it does have some chunks of butternut squash. Now butternut squash is a very, very, very low glycemic, lower carb count squash, but it does have more carb counts than spaghetti squash. So when you look at this, the entire bag, you're not gonna eat the entire bag, has 35 grams of carbs and 10 grams of fiber. So we're talking 25 grams of net carbs. But if you actually do a serving, which is a third of it, you have 11 grams of total carbs, three grams of fiber. So you have about eight grams of carbs, but only three of it's sugar, and it's sugar that's coming from the buttermilk squash and coming from that. There's no sugar added to this at all. You have spaghetti squash, butternut squash, tomato pulp, uh, some badano cheese. So we have some pumpkin puree, which is gonna add some carbs, spices, heavy cream, carrot puree, adding some carbs. So there's no actual sugar sugar, it's just coming from a few vegetables. So definitely keto friendly and a couple of the carbs that are coming through on this I think are going to be fine. Then within that same world, we have rice, cauliflower and butternut squash risotto. Okay, in this case, it's bigger chunks of butternut squash. And this is the same kind of thing. Okay, one third of the container here, one cup, seven grams of carbs, two grams of fiber. So five grams net carbs. We're talking really good stuff here. We've got some olive oil in here. We've got rice cauliflower. We've got butternut squash sauce. Okay, so anyhow, really good stuff. There's one thing in there that is a little bit frustrating. There's some yeast extract in there. I don't always rain on people's parades, but yeast extract is sort of an excitotoxin is essentially MSG in another form, which doesn't mean that it's a terrible product. It just means that you're getting a little bit more of an umami effect. I like to try to avoid things that have yeast extract, especially at night. So maybe this is something you have for lunch. Then this one isn't necessarily brand spanking new for fall specifically, but it's another one that's new to me that definitely would work on keto. It's these cool shrimp seafood burgers. I'm a big fan of shrimp on keto because of the zinc content. One of the richest sources of zinc that you can find is going to be shrimp and shellfish in general. So it's kind of cool they made these into burgers. Now there's a few caveats here. Shrimp is the main ingredient. Then we go into Pollock, which isn't as high quality of a fish. It's a white fish, not a whole lot to it, not a lot of fat, not a lot of body in general. Sunflower oil, kind of wish they didn't use that, wish they would have used something else, but at least it has a, uh, you know, I don't know, at least it's using it just to give it a little bit of a fat in general, otherwise this thing wouldn't uh, stick together. The rice flour, but it's clearly so far down on the list because we have, one gram of carbohydrates. I mean, it can't be much. And I'm glad they use that instead of saying like wheat flour or something like that. Okay, let's move into the next chapter. All right, so now we're in the pantry items. These are new for October and a couple things that are just new to me. Okay, we have Kalamata olives with jalapenos and peri peri peppers. Jalapenos, peri peri peppers, rich in, you guessed it, the peppers, the capsaicin, that can have an effect on our TRPV receptors. It can actually encourage a metabolic drive, okay? It can encourage a little bit of a boost in the resting metabolic rate. But Kalamata olives, also you're getting, of course, the fats from the olive oil. The people don't think that olives actually have fat, but where do you think olive oil comes from? In this case, we still have four grams of fat in two olives. So you can bet your bottom dollar that most of that is going to be olive oil. Okay, then in the olive itself, we get the fiber, but we also get the hydroxytyrosol. We get the antioxidant effects. So cool new item, definitely 100% an awesome keto item. And there's nothing really weird in there. Okay, you look at like citric acid, we've got calcium chloride. These are just things that kind of hold it together as a stabilizer and a preservative, but not bad stuff. Anyway, oh, and they added some extra virgin olive oil into it. So that one is amazing. Then we have the fall harvest salsa. Okay, this one is cool. Pumpkin is the first ingredient, which is gonna drive the carb content up. So don't be surprised there. Tomatoes, water, tomatillos, some apples, some butternut squash, some red bell peppers. 
There is some natural flavoring in there. But again, we're talking three grams of carbs for two tablespoons. You're gonna be okay if you have a small amount of it. And it might taste really good on say some eggs or maybe again that keto toast or something if you're using keto bread. Then this one is a little bit more questionable because some funny stuff in there. Brand new cheesy seasoning blend. Might taste really good on say some broccoli or some asparagus. I haven't tried it yet, but I usually put nutritional yeast on broccoli and asparagus anyway. This might just give it more of a cheesy flavor. Uh, dried cheddar cheese blend. We have salt cheese. We have whey solids, buttermilk solids, sea salt, garlic powder, onion powder. So it's not terrible. It's just basically dried cheese. So it's kind of like the stuff that you would get in a mac and cheese pouch, but without all the preservatives and all the garbage. So I don't see any preservatives in there. In fact, I think the reason they probably have dried rosemary in there is for the sort of natural preservative effect. Then chili sesame oil. And at first you think sesame oil, that's a terrible omega-6, I don't want it. And you've probably heard me to the nth degree talking about this. Sesame oil is the anomaly, okay? The antioxidants in sesame oil, sesame and sesamolin, they have a powerful effect at making it so that the sesame oil does not have as much of a negative effect and it becomes more stabilized. So it doesn't denature and go through lipid peroxidation. Plus chilies. So we're getting again, that capsaicin effect, okay? That TRPV receptor that is affecting our brain, that is affecting adrenaline response, making our metabolism potentially elevate a little bit more. You can bet that I'm gonna be using this and I would probably use this if I was making some kind of a stir fry. So I'll use like cauliflower rice, I'll use a little bit of ground chicken, something like that, a little tamari, a little bit of you know, Bragg's aminos and probably some of this to give it some extra flavor. Pumpkin spice rooibos, yes. I know it looks like it's rubios, but it's pronounced rooibos. Nothing too fancy here, just a cool pumpkin flavor herbal tea that if you're fasting, you would absolutely have during your fast. This one was brand spanking new. Normally I would see this vegan mayo spread and dressing and I probably wouldn't even take a look. I'd be like, I'm sick of this stuff. Like Franken food, crazy weird hodgepodge stuff just to fit like in a vegan profile. Nothing against vegan at all, but the foods out there for vegan people, not exactly the best, right? But then I saw this, avocado oil is the first ingredient, water chickpea broth, which was just water and chickpeas, distilled vinegar, sea salt, some natural flavors, again, we don't know, mustard flour, lemon juice, uh, gum arabic, xanthan gum, garlic powder, onion powder, rosemary, and black pepper. I mean, they're using avocado oil and mixing it with chickpeas to essentially get it thick. This is awesome. Like this is how a vegan mayo should look. It shouldn't be hydrogenated soybean oil combined with pea starch, no. So anyway, awesome keto find. It doesn't say keto on there anywhere, but it works for keto. Okay, then this one is not brand spanking new. I just like this. They have a mixed nut butter. You can compare that to Nutso, and it's a lot cheaper than Nutso that you would get, say, at Costco. These ones I wanna mention as sort of honorable mentions. They're not necessarily keto, but they intrigued me and they impressed me because even though they're not keto, they're good ones to have maybe if you're taking a break from keto, simply because the carb like effect on these is nice. This is a protein maple muffin and it's got cassava flour as the first ingredient, and then milk protein isolate, not concentrate, which is always better, coconut oil as the fat, maple syrup as the sweetener, maple syrup powder, almond meal, okay, whole milk powder, egg powder, butter powder. Um, we've got a few like kind of preservatives in there. We've got a sorbyl palmitate, nothing to be alarmed with. We've got egg white powder, uh, tapioca starch, we've got some leavening, really like a really relatively clean cup. Like there's nothing weird in there. There's no wheat flour. There's no rice flour. It's totally gluten-free and pretty low glycemic. They had a chocolate one too, but they added sugar to that one. This one uses maple, which I thought was great. So not keto, but good if you're taking a little break. And then they also started just carrying this flavor of the RX bar. Okay, this is the snickerdoodle flavor, which obviously works really well with the whole pumpkin spice regime. We've got three egg whites, six almonds, four cashews, and two dates. The sweetness is coming from the dates, which is gonna be a fair bit of fructose. So again, could be something that you could have when you're not on keto. Wanted to give those an honorable shout out because they're new items. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Don't forget to check out ButcherBox down below and I'll see you tomorrow.